What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about Giga Berlin, Tesla's Giga factory in Europe. Why they chose that location, what's happening, and what's the importance of having a Giga factory in Europe. We're going to be talking all about that in this video today. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about why Tesla needs a factory in every continent. Now Elon has said this before, so if you know what Elon has said, you probably already know the answer. The reason is taxes, import fees, tariffs, and just the amount of time it actually takes for cars to go from a ship to Europe or even Asia. So Giga Shanghai is already operational. That is producing cars at this instant and those cars are actually being delivered to customers. So there are many, many issues that come up with manufacturing different types of cars for different locations if you're doing all of them in one building. For example, in Fremont, California, their Tesla's factory, they make cars for the entire world. That means having the right sticker, that means having the right language, that means for UK and Australia, you need to have a right hand drive version of those cars. That greatly increases the complexity of the cars they actually have to make in one factory. Now with having factories on each continent, just having one factory in each continent, what they can do is spread that load out. So instead of having all their cars being produced from one factory in one location in the entire world, what they can do is a third of their cars can be produced in Shanghai, only for the Asia market, only for China and the surrounding countries beside it. And then you can have one for Europe. Now there is a reason why Tesla chose Berlin, specifically that exact location. So this location is not actually in Berlin. If you look at the address, it's actually just outside of Berlin. So for example, like me, I live in Brampton, but I would say I'm from Toronto if I'm talking to anyone pretty much outside this country. Most people wanna know where Brampton is. If I say Toronto, they'll be like, oh, Toronto, Canada, right. So that's why they say Giga Berlin. Sounds cool too. Elon actually said, it sounds like a nightclub. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's gonna be, uh, you know, they're like, okay, so he, he actually even said, would you go for a car company who had a nightclub or a one that didn't? <laughs> and I just thought that is absolutely absurd. And the fact that Tesla can actually do it, Elon would be like, oh yeah, let's just buy out this nightclub and just make it our own, like, you know, a Tesla nightclub or something. I don't know. Elon might actually do it, who knows. Having a factory on each continent means that the cars being produced in that specific factory are localized. Pretty much all the cars you're gonna be selling in this factory are gonna be for mainland Europe and then you got British, the British Isles. Those are right hand drive variants. So obviously this factory is only doing, right now they're only gonna start building phase one and then you also have phase two, three, and four, which is basically just a mirrored version and then like a mirrored version again. By next year, in 2021, we're only gonna see about the quarter of the entire factory. And as I said, they're gonna start with Model Y production first because that car is gonna be a killer. So here's a problem with Europe. Because they're located on the west coast of North America, not the east, the ships that are leaving from California either have to go through the Panama Canal if they wanna to get to Europe, but Elon said that the Panama Canal gets blocked or really busy sometimes so what they have to do what the ships have to do is literally go next to antarctica and then come right back up all the way to europe that is such a long journey now that tesla has a factory in shanghai what tesla doesn't need to do is make model threes for the asia market now in china all the labels and whatnot have to be in chinese whereas in america or even europe Actually, especially Europe, they have to be in different languages, but in North America, they don't. They have to be in English, which is totally fine, except Elon did state that in the beginning, they had this problem where they sent Model 3s to China with English labels, and they were stuck at the port, the Chinese port, until the, those labels arrived and you could fit them together. Another problem Tesla had for Europe this time was headlights. They were American-made headlights. Now, American regulations on headlights are very weak, I would say. Europe tightens them up. The headlights have to be kind of to a higher standard. Nonetheless, all Tesla headlights are really good, just saying. But they just have to be at a different, higher standard. So for example, the low beam, what we call in America, is pretty high. It's considered almost like a high beam in Europe, just because how far it's projecting onto the road. Europe puts regulations on that, which makes sense because you don't want to blind drivers coming the other way. Here in North America, everyone has SUVs. Generally, you don't get blinded. If you're traveling in a car, well, then you might want to get an SUV because chances are you'll be blind. Especially half the people in North America travel with their high beams on. Like, what the hell is wrong with those people traveling with their high beams? What? I don't know. Because headlights were an issue, the boat or the ship couldn't actually leave the port. 
So what you had to do was deliver headlights to the port and then you had to have like people there to actually replace them. So take out the American version of the headlights, put in the European version. It was a complete mess. These are all some of the things that happened during Model 3's production hell. It was, as Elon describes it, really, really bad, like per literally hell. And it kind of makes sense if you just hear these stories about how they actually got the ships and how, how they got Model 3's across the ocean. It's quite impressive that they were able to come out of that pretty much unharmed, I would say, because you didn't really get to hear that unless Elon Musk actually talked about it. If you didn't talk about it, no one would know Tesla would be in this sort of production hell sort of phase. They would just think like, oh, they're having trouble, but they wouldn't know that. Oh my gosh, it's actually so bad as it is. So that is why it is really important to get a factory in Europe, in Asia, and in pretty much every other continent where you don't have to travel across oceans. Complete, complete disaster if you do. Now that I've went on a pretty much long enough rant to talk about that, let's talk about why they chose that location. There's a really good reason. BMW wanted to build a factory there, an auto factory. So. What that meant was BMW was, they were actually pretty certain about it. They got all the permits, they got all the paperwork done. Elon said they got about a year's worth of paperwork done at that factory, which meant when Tesla came along, they didn't have to buy the land and then do all the paperwork and wait a year before they can actually start building. They could just select the land, the specific land, and then say, okay, we got the paperwork done and the paperwork for an auto company, for an auto factory to be specific. Because most, if not all, the paperwork was done, all you had to do was start with the actual construction sort of phase or actually clearing the land and then you start construction and whatnot, right? That's a big reason why they went for this exact location. Tesla wants to double every 18 months. If they want to do that, they cannot wait a year just to get the paperwork done. They got to start building the factory now. Start shipping Model Ys and 3s from that factory by mid next year or even beginning next year if they can possibly manage to do that. But they gotta really act fast. They can't wait till next year just to get the paperwork done just so they can start breaking down the trees or something. And that's why I think this location is really good. It's right off the Autobahn. You have a railway line and you know, we might not think about it too much in, in North America, but in Europe, trains are big. By big, I mean their public transport system in Europe is utterly, utterly amazing. It's so good, in fact, you'll reach faster, in some cases, in a train rather than a car. Whereas here, try taking a train pretty much anywhere, unless you're in the subway of a city, you're basically screwed. That's it, you're not gonna, you're, A, you're not gonna enjoy the experience, B, you're not gonna get there much quicker than a car anyways. And what Elon has actually said was, there's a train station right across the street or road and whatnot. And what the city is gonna do, because you know, it's not actually Berlin, it's like it's the outskirts of Berlin. What that city is gonna do is move that train station from across the street over. So that means when people actually get off the train, they could literally just walk to the door of the Gigafactory, which means people who work in the city or who live in the city, people who live on the outskirts of the city can easily reach there. You got the Autobahn, you also got the train. So it's probably gonna be one of the best places to actually reach work. It's not gonna be super hard. And I think Tesla has nailed this location, especially if a manufacturer like BMW wanted to do it. I think it has to be a pretty good location. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now, let me know in the comments down below if I missed anything. I might have, I'm not entirely sure. So comment down below what, what I've missed and I'll probably make a separate video talking about that because this video was loaded. Like loaded. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Peace.